Hi guys, welcome to a new video. It's a sit down video. We're not going to one of these for a while. Long time. So this video is about Google Maps. It's about Google Maps. It's about using it as a free satellite navigation system whilst in Florida. It's one of the most, it's the, I think it's the biggest question that we get asked yeah. regarding car hire and, not and satellite Florida. navigate. Yeah, you can use it anyway. It doesn't, it can be in this country. It can be day to day in this country. We use it every day. Yeah. And um, I've got some video recordings that I've done on my phone, which we'll, we'll put on the screen. So this is a video that Nick really wanted to do and it's it's Nick's little project. So I'm going to be the person that probably knows nothing about it and will ask some questions as Nick goes along. So this is the question, like we said, that, that, that gets asked most about Florida. How do you get satellite navigation? So there are three ways you can get it. You can either um, take a TomTom, -tom, an independent unit with you, as long as it's got the maps loaded for the USA. You can hire one from the car hire company. You pay something extortionate like $17 a day or possibly more. Or you can just make use of your smartphone. Um, all modern smartphones have Google Maps built in. Android or iPhone have got Google Maps apps. You can uh, you can use your, you can use Google Maps as a mapping tool. You can also use it as a satellite navigation, which will actually speak to you and tell you what to do in terms of um, turns left and right and things like that. It's also got a bunch of loads of other things built in, like restaurant reviews, menus. Um, live traffic information around Florida. Now the biggest question is, is do I need data roaming to be able to use it in the USA? Um, the answer to that is no you don't. It's better if you do because you will get live traffic information. So if you're stuck on the I-4 you know how long the traffic's going to be in front of you. That all depends on your SIM contract. Yeah. So if you don't let, so we'll, we'll work on the premise that you basically have a smartphone, you don't have roaming and you want to use sat nav as soon as you get out the airport. Okay? So first thing that you're going to need is somewhere to mount it. So the first thing that, I've, that I use, I mean, we always get cars with Android Auto on and I'll explain a little bit about that later on in the video. So this is just a, a one pound um, vent mount, vent mount for, for, we got it from Home Bargains, I think. You, like you basically, it clips into the vent, your phone sits in there like that and it basically holds your phone just like that. And you can mount it in your car and, or- We need to put that in James actually. I know, or you can get one of these, which is a window sucker. We use it for our GoPro, but you can, you can get attachments like this onto the end for your phone. Uh, the other thing you're going to need is your phone cable, so keep it charged because obviously Google um, satellite navigation and your screen on all the time is going to use some battery. And this is probably not required in modern cars, it's basically a USB cigarette lighter. Most cars have USB yeah. now anyway. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to load the video of what you need to do to basically get the maps onto your phone before you even arrive in America. Because obviously if you've not got roaming, then you're not going to be able to download the maps or access them in real time. So I have a little video that I've um, pre-prepared. So I'm going to play them in order. So as you can see on the screen now, it's basically showing a, a, a map of Leeds. We're going to go to the offline map setting. There we go. Select your own map. That will bring up a grid of what, and everything in that square is basically going to download the maps within that region. So you, as you can see there, that's going to use 40 megs worth of data. Now we obviously want to go to America rather than Leeds. So, so there we go, we'll zoom out. So we want everything from St. Augustine right down to Sarasota and it's gonna use 395 meg of data. Click download and that basically sits in the background and downloads the maps on onto your phone locally. I did this yesterday while we were in car, so you don't have to be on Wi-Fi. No, got, do it, if, do if it here before data. you leave. Yeah, yeah, do it here before you leave. I just did it on my, in, when I was dri yeah. driving yesterday. If you've got roaming on your phone and you can't be bothered to doing that, then you just load, load Google Maps as and yeah. when and it'll just load the map straight from the internet. It's just easier because sometimes when you're in the airport and you're it in the car. It takes a while. Especially in Orlando, like I say, this can be done anywhere. If you're in Orlando, it doesn't lock on straight away. Yeah. When, as, and when you get panicked and you set off. So so that will basically, and you can do that for your local area as well. I mean, quite often if your Google account or your your, um, your home account knows your local area, it will actually cache the local um, maps locally mm -hmm. for you. So the second thing that um, Google Maps will do, so when you get there, you can literally turn your phone into, into flight mode and load Google Maps. You can't unfortunately talk to it, but you can type in zip codes and addresses and things like that, and it will navigate and it will speak back to you. Right, so when you get to America, first thing to do is to turn off the satellite navigation mode because that will try and access, sorry, the um, satellite view mode. That will actually try and download all the maps um, over the internet. So I switched it to default. And the second thing that I'm gonna do is basically uh, turn on, so set it to default mode and turn on traffic. 
So that will actually, if you've got internet access, will will download the live traffic information from Google, and that information is calculated from other cars that are using Android Auto and whether they're still or whether they're moving ahead of you. So everybody kind of shares that that moving data, and you basically build up a traffic map. Wow. So as you can see on this video, um, it actually shows you the reds moving along the road here. We've actually come back to um, sort, of, sort of Leeds here and Manchester. So you can see the dark reds there. Um, it actually shows you where there's really bad traffic in, in that particular area. What I would say is, as a quick thing there, is I used to say to me, my dad as well when he was going away, use it in the local area. If you've never used it before, start getting used to it in the local area so that you're used to it. Don't use it for the first time when you get to Florida because you'll be like, what am I doing? You'll have no idea how it works. And you'll get panicked. Start using it a few weeks, months before you go and get used to it. We use it all the time around here. We use it locally because it has access to traffic information. Mm -hmm. So if we know, I mean, obviously we know the way to get somewhere in our local area, but what we don't know is that there's any accidents yeah. ahead or anything like that. So Google will actually know and reroute you around it. And it's hard when you use it. You, you always think, I know better than Google. I'm not going that way. And we've always done it and we always end up screwing I always up. I trust Google. Nickel said, we, don't, don't go there, go this way. And, and say, we end up getting stuck in traffic. Always trust Google because the time. Google knows that there's an accident or some traffic and it's trying to divert you. So even if you think that doesn't seem right, Google knows why it's taking you that way. Yeah. So the, the next thing you can do is you can actually use Google to look at the street map. So if you know that you're going to a particular location, let's say a Walmart on the 192 or something like that, and you know you want to know what it looks like, you can basically um, zoom in on the map, go right down to the point, find it on the map where, where it actually shows Walmart or whatever, zoom right in. So on this particular example, I'm zooming into the Walt Disney World sign. So I've actually found it on the, um, on the map, which is just before Hollywood Studios off World Drive. So when you get to the, to the point where you can, you can see where you want to see what it looks like at street level, you tap and hold. So tap and hold, you see the little pin. And then when you tap it at the bottom, it will actually pop up a little square above where it says dropped pin. So basically, as you can see on the screen now, the little pin has a little um, picture above it. Click on that and it actually shows you um, at road level what it would look like as if you were sat on that road. So, and you can rotate it round, and then you can actually use the arrows to actually drive forward. And as you can see here, we're actually driving up World Drive, um, getting to the Walt Disney World sign. So let me get a little bit closer and you'll be able to see it. Memories, brings back memories. There we go. So there we go, you can see the Walt Disney World sign. Um, and then at any point then, you can just tap that and say navigate to here. So for directions, which is pretty easy to you. Again, like Lisa, pl practice using it at home. Just practice at home, you can sit on your sofa and just zoom in on, on places and go to street view, yep. go down the, the road, the street, the, um, and just get used to places. If you're a nervous driver, then, then just, yep. just keep practicing while you're at home. So as you can see on this video example, we're actually going to um, browse on the map and then navigate to uh, Kissimmee Airport Gateway. So I've picked an area on this roundabout here, and then we're just going to click the, direct, the directions button and it will basically navigate there. So it's as easy as that, dead easy. The traffic circle. The traffic circle, yeah. So the next thing it's useful for is if you want to basically find a restaurant to eat. So basically browse to your local area and push the restaurant button at the top of the screen, which you can see there. It will then highlight different types of restaurants. So you can choose takeout, delivery, steakhouses. And then when you've picked one from the list, you can click navigate, call, menu, whichever you want to do. They're all kind of navigate. It's, it's so easy. I don't even need to explain it. Steakhouse. Outback steakhouse. steakhouse. Yeah. You can call them from your, from your mobile going directly from Google Maps. Um, and there's even, the directions even, button there, just click on that, like yeah. that, and um, it takes you there. Yeah. You can also, um, the, if, it's, if they're using something like Open Table, you can actually tap on the restaurant, click Reserve a Table, and then it will take you to their website where you can actually do the reservation as well. A lot of this you might already know and be thinking this is all basic, but a lot of people don't use this. Um, a lot of people ask us this question yeah. all the time. Like my parents would find this invaluable if they were there on their own, uh, but probably wouldn't use it uh, yeah. until we showed them and showed them and showed them. So obviously, if you download a map, it can become out of date pretty quickly. Now, Google will actually update itself um, quite regularly, but if you do find that there's there's the map on your phone is maybe six months old or something like that, go into the map on offline maps, which we're showing you on the screen now. Um, click the map, so on this one it's map three, and then click update, and it will just basically update the map to see if there's any changes on the road since you last downloaded it on Google. So a question that somebody might have, so I'm gonna ask it, what about Apple iPlay and, not Apple iPlay, Apple phones and Apple Maps, can you do the similar thing on that? Apple Maps, 
No idea. Um, I know a lot of people that use Apple Maps and the maps tend to be out of date. We always use Google and you can get Google Maps for iPhone as yeah. well and it works exactly the same way. But if you have um, got an iPhone and you do something similar, just let us know in the comments so everybody knows, can you do the similar kind of thing with the directions, the street view? We don't have an iPhone so we yeah. don't know. Um, when you do navigate and you click the navigate button, it will then spawn into navigation mode and it will actually start speaking. So if you've got Bluetooth in the car or you've got a cable connecting it to the audio, you can actually have it come out of the speakers. So the other thing, I mean, we we have these phones, but we don't actually actively use it the way that we've we've shown you guys. So on newer cars, you have something called Android Auto, uh, and on uh, for for Apple, it's basically Apple CarPlay, I think it is. That's what mm -hmm. they call it. Like that, yeah. It allows you to project the contents of your phone onto the screen of the car. So all you're touching is your screen, and it effectively replaces the the sat nav in your car. Um, even if the car hasn't got sat nav and it's got Android Auto, by connecting your data cable and then following the prompts on the screen, it will actually project Google Maps to your to your car screen. Now, all the cars that we've had in the, in America in the last three or four trips, they've all had Android Auto. We always get into, we, when you go with someone like Alamo, you can obviously get in. We go in and have a look yeah. at the sat navs and say, yeah. this hasn't got it, this hasn't. Nissan versus I think, don't to, have it. Yeah, to be fair, the last trip, we only got in one car and they all had them. Yeah, so the Toyotas and the Chrysler both had them. Um, and they work exactly the same way. It, the map's just horizontal, sort of landscape like that, but it works exactly the same way. What you can't do is you can't do some of the restaurant features in that. Mm. You have to, uh, you, you also have to talk to Google, um, to Android Auto. So that probably would need a data connection. But everything we've just showed you, if you download your offline maps, all that will work when you are basically sat in America without any data signal, and you can just type in the zip codes. So I hope you found that interesting. If you've got any more questions or anything, something that Nick hasn't gone over, ask us in the comments below because we'll try and answer it. Um, and I would say practice here definitely. while you're at home. Use it locally. Just if you can exactly the, the same. Yeah, turn the traffic on so you can see the traffic ahead. Zoom out, have a look at city centres during rush hour. You'll be able to see where the traffic is. Find a local restaurant, find a takeaway, try making a call, etc. Yeah, so thanks for watching today, guys. Hope that was um, informational. Drop us a comment below, hit the like button, click the notification bell. See you on the next vlog. Bye for now.